Welcome to this WiseL Excel VBA tutorial. In this part of our series on writing SQL for Excel files, we're going to look at how to write text criteria using the like operator. We'll start with a quick recap of basic criteria with text, and then introduce the like operator and the percentage wildcard character. We'll also explain how to use the underscore wildcard character, and how to combine both wildcards with character lists to create very powerful, flexible search patterns for your string columns. We'll spend a little time looking at how to deal with code characters in strings, including quotation characters and wildcard characters that you want to treat as literal text. And the final part of the video looks at how to use some basic string functions in your criteria, and we'll perform some examples such as comparing string lengths and making case-sensitive comparisons. So quite a lot to do in this one, let's get started. If you've been watching previous parts of this series, you should be fairly familiar with the basic setup by now, so you may prefer just to skip to the next chapter of this video. If you haven't seen previous parts of the series, here's a quick overview of the basics of how things work. We've got a macro-enabled workbook which allows us to run a query by clicking the fairly obviously labelled button here on the menu sheet, and when we do that it's going to extract some information from a separate Excel file called Movies. The Movies Workbook contains several different worksheets and tables, with a variety of information about different films. I'm going to keep the Movies Workbook open for the duration of the video, just to make it easier to point out which bit I'm talking about, but you're welcome to close down the Movies file, it doesn't need to be open for the code to work. I've saved both of these files in the same folder, and I'll pop a link in the video description so that you can download these files yourself, and follow along and write the code if you'd like to. I've already written a lot of code in the text criteria and the like operator workbook, and a lot of that relies on Microsoft ActiveX data objects to establish the connection to the movies file. I'm not going to talk about ActiveX data objects in this video. If you are interested in that part, then we do have a separate playlist with a bunch of videos which explain how to do that. And I'd recommend starting with the one that says, uh, how do I get data from a closed Excel file using VBA? Just to give you a very brief look at the code I've already written in this main workbook, the text criteria workbook, if I head into the Visual Basic Editor, I've already set a reference to the Microsoft ActiveX Data Objects Library. If I head up to the Tools menu and choose References, you can hopefully see in here I've referenced Microsoft ActiveX Data Objects 6.1. I've got a very basic subroutine that's triggered by clicking the Run Query button on the menu sheet, and really all this does is constructs the string which represents our SQL query, and then passes that string into a separate procedure which deals with all the complicated stuff such as establishing the connection to the movie's workbook, it uses our query to set the source property of our record set object, and then the rest of the code deals with writing that information out into a separate worksheet. So just to demonstrate the basics of the code working, if we head back to the menu sheet, we can click the Run Query button, and that generates a full list of all of the films from the Film Worksheet in the Movies Workbook. We can also tidy our workbook up by heading to the menu sheet again, and then just clicking the Delete All But Menu Sheet button, and we'll be writing a lot of queries in this video, so you'll want to rely on clicking that button just to keep things neat and tidy. Let's have a recap of the basic way to write text criteria. For the first example, I'd like to return a list of films belonging to the science fiction genre. So to do that, we'll need to add a WHERE clause to our query to ask where the value of the genre field is equal to the text science fiction. If I head back to the Visual Basic Editor, I'm sure you probably already know how to do this. If you've watched the previous video in the series, you definitely know how to do this already. We can add a WHERE clause to our SELECT statement, and then I can write the name of the field, genre. I'll put this in some square brackets to indicate that it's an identifier, the name of a thing. Then I can ask if it's equal to the text science fiction. I've got a couple of different text delimiter characters I can use here when we're using the provider to connect to an Excel workbook. One way to do this is to write the word science fiction in a set of double double quotes. I need the double double quotes because of syntax rules in VBA. If I try to contain these in just a single set of double quotes, I generate a syntax error. So the double double quotes are required in this case to make that work. And then if I switch back to my menu sheet and I run my query, I'll get a list of all the science fiction films. You'll see if I head back to the Visual Basic Editor, I'm writing out the query we're using to return the set of results as well as the number of results into the immediate window. If you don't have that displayed already, head to the View menu and choose Immediate Window from there. So you'll see the double double quotes that I've written in the code have been translated into single double quotes. 
I still think that's a little confusing to look at, so I prefer to use single quotes or apostrophes to enclose my strings when I'm writing SQL queries. So if I replace my double double quotes with single apostrophes, I can head back to the menu sheet and I can run my query again and I'll return exactly the same set of end results. And you'll see the number of rows that's been returned is the same as well. Just one other basic thing to remember about text criteria, they're not case sensitive. It doesn't matter what combination of uppercase and lowercase letters I use to write these criteria, it will still return the same number of results. It's based on the spelling of the word rather than the case of the characters within it. So just heading back to the menu sheet and running that one more time, we'll see all the science fiction films again. Now we're going to talk about case sensitivity and how to write case sensitive criteria a bit later on in the video, but for now we'll just accept that text criteria aren't case sensitive. You can also use different operators in your text criteria. It doesn't always have to be an equals operator. Let's say I wanted to find a list of all of the truly awful films in the database. I'll, I'll look for films whose genre equals awful. And if I head back to the menu sheet and I run that query, I'll return all the Twilight films, basically. I think we're all agreed by now that these are truly awful films. It's far more likely I'd want to exclude those films from my set of results. So rather than saying equal to, I can change that to say not equal to with the open and closed angle brackets. So heading back to the menu sheet and running that query again, I'll return a list of all of the films except for those in the awful genre, so it's five less than the total number of films in the database. We can also write criteria to ask if one string of text is greater than or less than another string of text. So to demonstrate that, let's change our criteria to reference the title column this time. And I want to know if any film title is greater than or equal to X. If I head back to my menu sheet and run my query again, what we're basically seeing now is a list of all the films whose title begins with any character from the letter X onwards. I think this is a little easier to understand if we sort our query results alphabetically. If I head back to the, men, uh, the Visual Basic Editor and I add an order by clause to my query, I can say order by title. That will automatically go in ascending order, but I can optionally say ASC to make sure that's explicit. And then if I head back to my menu sheet and run the query again, if you could imagine your entire list of all the films sorted alphabetically, wherever the letter X would appear in that list, anything from that point to the end of the list is what you'd return. It doesn't just have to be a single letter either, you could have an entire word in there. So let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor. Let's say we wanted to know uh, we wanted to find a list of films that are greater than Predator, which of course is a nonsensical statement to make because as everyone knows, there is no film greater than Predator. However, we can ask to see any film in our list whose title is alphabetically greater than the text Predator, just to clarify what I mean by this. So heading back to the menu sheet, we can run the query again, and they're all sorted alphabetically. I'm absolutely positive that Pretty Woman is not greater than Predator, but alphabetically, Pretty Woman is the first film in the list, which appears after the film Predator. We can also, if we can say things are greater than or less than another string of text, we can ask if text falls between two bits of text. So if we head back to the Visual Basic Editor, Rather than saying greater than this time, let's change the greater than symbol to say between. Then I'm going to use two different bits of text. I'm going to go with, oh, we could just do uh, single letters. Let's do something a bit more interesting. Let's say between the devil and then and, as a separate bit of text, the deep blue sea. Or a rock and a hard place, or me and you. Uh, whatever you prefer your two bits of text to be. Alphabetically, anything which falls between those two bits of text is what will be returned to our list of results. If we head back to the menu sheet, run the query again. If the, the Deep Blue Sea was a film in our list, that would appear above The Deer Hunter. And if The Devil was a film in our list, that would appear below The Departed. We can also use the in operator with text values. And this is useful when you want to check if the value of a column is equal to at least one of several different bits of text. So let's just return to the example of genres for the time being. I'll say uh, where genre and not between, I'm going to say 
in. And then in a set of round brackets, I could type in a comma separated list of bits of text. I'm just going to get rid of the and the deep blue sea part here. And the first bit of text I'm going to look for is science fiction, just as we looked at earlier on. If I just close the round brackets there at that point, that's essentially the same as saying genre equals science fiction. If I, however, added an extra item inside the round brackets separated by commas, I could see all the films where the genre was science fiction or fantasy. And then I could type in another comma and I could go for another genre altogether. Let's go for action. That was supposed to be typed in in single quotes. Let's try that again. There we go. And you can have as many different items in that list as you like. It's a lot shorter than writing where genre equals science fiction or genre equals fantasy or genre equals action, which is what we would have to do ordinarily. So heading back to the menu sheet, running the query again, I get all the action, science fiction and fantasy films in the list. You can reverse that as well by applying the not operator in front of in. So I could ask where the genre not in one of those three. And if I head back to the menu sheet and run that query again, I'll get everything except for action, science fiction or fantasy. I could have applied the not operator to the between option as well. So we could say not between. The final thing we did with text criteria in the previous video was to have a brief look at the like operator and wildcard characters. Now that's going to be a big focus for the things we'll do in this video. So let's again have a quick recap of the basics of how those work. I'm going to change my criteria to look at the title column again. And then rather than saying not in, I'm going to change that to use the equals operator. Then I'm just going to take away the set of brackets and the comma separated list of values. And I'm going to look for any film whose title equals the word dragon. So having done that, if I head back to my menu sheet and I run my query again, there's one single film whose title exactly matches that bit of text. What I'm now going to do is change the operator that I'm using there from equals to like. Now, at this point, it won't make any difference to the end results. When you're working with text and you're using basic bits of text like this, you can happily change the equals and like operator and they will do essentially the same thing. If I switch back to my menu sheet and run the query again, it's still returning the one single film that exactly matches that string. But using the like operator means you can also include wildcard characters in your strings. The main wildcard character you're likely to encounter is the percentage symbol. If I add a percentage symbol after the word dragon, the percentage symbol represents any number of any characters, including no characters at all. So if I head back to my menu sheet, it's going to effect essentially return any film whose title begins with the word dragon, even if dragon is the only word in the film title. I can change the position of the wildcard character and I can also ask for things that are not like that pattern as well. So heading back to the Visual Basic Editor, rather than saying like, I could say not like. And that would return, if I run my query again, that would return all the films that do not begin with the word dragon. So it should be four less than the 1200 films we return from the entire list. I can change the position of the wildcard character, as I said, let's take away the not and replace I'll place the percentage wildcard at the beginning of the string rather than at the end. So that's anything that begins with any string of text and ends with the word dragon. So again, heading back to the menu sheet, I can run that query again and find any film whose final word is dragon. I can include multiple wildcard characters in the same string if I like as well. So heading back to the Visual Basic Editor, I can put a percentage wildcard both before and after that specific word. And then if I head back to the menu sheet, I can run that query again. And you can even come up with more complicated patterns of text. The wildcard characters can appear anywhere in the string. So let's say you wanted to, I don't know, play a party game or feel like you're on a game show or something like that. We could say, find me any films whose title matches the pattern of the something of the something. So using wildcard characters, one in the middle and one at the end of the string. And if I head back to the menu sheet and run the query again, anything which matches that pattern with beginning with the word the followed by anything at all before the phrase of the and then finishing with 
anything at all as well. Again, there's no real limit on the number of wild cards and the complexity of the string you build. So let's just change this a little bit. So let's say the something, the something, and the something. How many films can you think of whose title matches that pattern? If we head back to the menu sheet, run the query one more time for the time being, there we go, two films in our list which match that particular pattern. Now let's look for films whose titles contain one of two different words. We've looked for dragons previously, now let's look for tigers as well. Sadly, when we're using the like operator and wildcard characters, there isn't a convenient way to do this in a single criterion like we can with the in operator. Just to demonstrate what I mean by that, let's try changing our criteria here. So I'm going to take away the word the from the beginning. I'm going to look first of all for the word dragon inside one set of double quote, uh, sorry, inside one set of percentage symbols. And then within the next set of percentage symbols, look for the word tiger as well. Now that's going to look for any films whose title contains the sequence of words dragon followed by tiger in some place in the full title. If we head back to the menu sheet and we run that query, we'll see we get all the films that contain dragon followed by tiger, there's just the one of them. There could be any number of characters between the words dragon and tiger, of course, they just happen to appear right next door to each other. Let's try going back to the Visual Basic Editor and let's change the position of the two words. So I'm going to change dragon so that that sits at the end of the string. So let's take away dragon from the beginning. So we'll go for tiger first and then dragon at the end. Make sure there's just one single percentage symbol in between the two. And then if we head back to the menu sheet and run that one again, there are a couple of extra results this time. So there are multiple films with the word tiger followed by the word dragon in the title. But what I'm really trying to do here is I'm trying to find any films whose title contains either dragon or tiger. So in order to make that work back in the Visual Basic Editor, I don't have any choice here. I can't use the in operator to do this. So I couldn't, for example, say um, title in and then in a set of round brackets have tiger followed by dragon, each in their own set of single quote characters. So tiger, dragon, wrapped with percentage symbols. This doesn't work. What this is going to try to do is find any film whose title is equal to percentage tiger percentage or equal to percentage dragon percentage. And of course, as you might expect, there aren't any films in my database with those exact titles. So the query returned no results. To make this work, there's no combination of, of in and like that we can use here. So I can't say like in or in like, it simply doesn't work. The choices I have, or the one choice I have, I suppose, is to ask for films where the title like Tiger or, and then a completely separate criterion, I can say title like Dragon and just get rid of that extra closed around bracket there. So two completely separate criterion dealt with individually. If I head back to the menu sheet and I run my query again, I'll get any film containing one of those two words. If I wanted to use that same technique to find films that contain dragon or tiger in any order I like, then I can head back to the Visual Basic Editor and then simply change the word or to the word and. And as long as the word tiger and the word dragon appears in the film title, then that will return a result. And I don't need to worry about which order I've done that in. I get dragon, tiger, gate and crouching tiger, hidden dragon. One other thing you may need to be careful of when you're using wildcard characters is distinguishing between a sequence of characters and an actual word. To demonstrate what I mean by that, I'm going to take back my WHERE clause to just a single criterion and I'm going to look for any films that contain K-I-N-G or KING. If I head back to my menu sheet and I run my query, I return any film which has that four letter sequence somewhere in its title. So as well as films which do contain the actual word KING, like King Arthur, King Kong, etc, I've also got the four letter sequence K-I-N-G wrapped up in other words like smoking and talking. If I wanted to find films that contain the actual word KING, then I've got a, a few things I could try to do to make this work. Back in the Visual Basic Editor, one simple thing to do would be to stick a space either side of the word KING, and that guarantees that my character sequence 
must isolate those four characters into a separate word, K-I-N-G, surrounded by spaces. So if I head back to the, um, the menu sheet and I run this query again, that does indeed return only films that have the four letter sequence K-I-N-G with spaces either side of it, but then I lose things like King Kong and King Arthur. So if I wanted to bring those back as well, then I have to consider that the word King might be at the beginning of my film title. It could also be at the end of my film title, and it could be the case that the word King was the entire film title, just like the word Dragon was earlier on. So to make that work, we've got quite a few different individual criteria to test. So what I'd need to do is check where the title is like King, as I've done so already. I'm just going to copy that criterion and then say or, and then for the next one I could check that the title begins with the word king, so that would be K-I-N-G followed by a space, then a percentage symbol. And I could type in the or keyword again and type and paste in the same criteria. So this time I could check that the word king fell at the end of the film title, so that would be percentage space king. And just to be thorough, let's add one more or, paste this in again, and if I wanted to check that the film's title was just the word King, I could take away the wildcard characters entirely, as well as the spaces, and then say either like King or equal to King. So four separate criteria being tested, contains King, begins with King, ends with King, or is King. It's up to you whether you prefer like or equals here. Um, they will both do the same thing. Okay, so one last quick check of that. If I head back to the menu sheet and I run that query again, there's all of the films that contain the word King either at the beginning, somewhere in the middle, or at the end, or is just solely consisting of the word King. As our criteria are becoming a bit longer at this point, it may be worthwhile taking the time to separate the different keywords of our select statement, the different clauses, onto separate lines in our code, just to make it easier to modify the WHERE clause. So let's take a little bit of time to just do that. I'm going to use a space underscore character after the equals operator, and then take the SELECT keyword down to its own separate line. Just before the FROM clause, so I'm going to include a space here after the asterisk, I'm going to close some double quotes, and then concatenate a space underscore character before taking the FROM clause down to its own separate line. Then again, just before the WHERE clause, including the space after the FILM table reference, or FILM worksheet reference I should say, I'll close some more double quotes and then concatenate a space underscore continuation character. Then I have the WHERE clause on its own separate line. It's still a little bit too long at this point, but we'll solve that in just a moment. I'm going to head over to the end of the uh, WHERE clause just before the ORDER BY clause, close some double quotes, concatenate a space underscore, and then open the double quotes at the beginning of the next line. Finally, I'm just going to take my WHERE clause back down to just a single condition. So I'm going to take away everything after the first, like KING, and then we're ready to start modifying the WHERE clause and have a slightly easier time of things by being able to modify that one single line rather than work out which bit of the entire SELECT statement we need to change. So we've seen a few examples of using the percentage wildcard. The other wildcard character you're likely to encounter in SQL is the underscore. The percentage wildcard represents any number of any characters, including no characters at all, as we've seen. Each underscore wildcard character you type in represents any one single character. So it could be a letter, a number, or a punctuation character. If I type in two underscore characters in a sequence, the difference with the underscore character is that there must be a character in that position. The underscore can't represent no characters at all. So this one here with two underscores together is asking to show me any film whose title contains exactly two characters. If I head back to the menu sheet and I run that query, I'll find any films with exactly two characters in their name, and that could be both letters, both numbers, or a combination of the two. And if there were any with punctuation characters in there, they would be included as well. Heading back to the Visual Basic Editor, let's add an extra, wild, uh, an extra underscore wildcard. So that's three now. If I head back to my menu sheet, and I run that query again, that's going to return all the films with exactly three characters in their name. 
we can also include other specific characters along with the wildcards. So currently this is showing any films with exactly three characters, so that could be any character at all or any three characters at all. The fourth character I want to be a space. So I'll type in a space and then I'm going to follow this with four more underscore characters. You almost have to count them out as you type them in because it's impossible to tell after the fact how many you've typed in. It's not, uh, it just appears as a single continuous line with this particular font. Anyway, having done that, if I switch back to the menu sheet and run this query again, that's any film which follows the pattern of any three characters followed by a space followed by any four characters. You can combine underscores and percentage wildcards in the same search string. So let's add an extra couple of characters to the end of this. After the fourth one of our four underscores, let's type in another space, followed by a percentage symbol. So this is going to find any film whose title matches the pattern of any three characters, the fourth character must be a space, then any other four characters, the next character must be a space, and then anything which follows that. So heading back to the menu sheet, clicking our Run Query button returns all the films which match that pattern. Now you'll notice that this includes some films like Cat on Our Hot Tin Roof. It doesn't look as though that matches the pattern at first glance because there's not four characters in that sequence. It's two, then a one. But the space is included as a character. So three characters, the fourth one must be a space, then any four characters and the one after that must be a space and then anything else afterwards. And you can hopefully see there that the fourth character can also be a wild character, sorry, beg pardon, a, a punctuation character. So I've got some colon characters there after Ice Age and after Mad Max. Let's expand on that a little bit more. Let's make sure that the character immediately after the first space must be the letter L. So if we head back to the Visual Basic Editor, we're going to exchange that first one of the four underscores for an L. And then we can head back to the menu sheet and we can run that query again. And things are a little easier, I think, to work out at this point. We can see the first character sequence is any three characters, then a space, then the letter L in a block of four characters followed by a space, followed by anything after that. We can also control the ending of this as well. Let's let's add the letter G to the very end. So as well as all the concurrent conditions, the string must end in the letter G. So after the percentage symbol, we can simply add in the letter G to the end. And if we switch back to the menu sheet and run the query again, now you can see that we're, our pattern is being matched again. We're re returning fewer and fewer films each time. Let's just go one step further. I want to get rid of the love bug and make sure we only return films that end in the three letter sequence I N G. So back into the visual basic editor, nice and easy. We can add I N before the G and then we can run that query one more time to find our specific list of results. So you can create some fairly flexible criteria when you combine percentages with underscores with literal characters. But you can do even more clever things if you incorporate something called a character list or a car list. Just to demonstrate what I mean by that, I'd like to try to return all the films whose title begins with either X or Y or Z. Now I know we did that earlier on by asking for films whose title is greater than or equal to the letter X, but I'd like to be a little more specific this time. So I'm going to say, first of all, where title like X percentage, and then after that, I'm going to say or, and then I'm going to copy and paste the title like X criterion, and then change the X to a Y, type in another or after that, paste it in again, and change the X to a Z. Having done that, I'm going to head back to my menu sheet and run my query, and that returns all the films beginning with X, Y, or Z, as we'd expect. If we head back to the Visual Basic Editor, my problem with that is it's quite a long-winded set of criteria to type out. We can make it much, much shorter. I'm going to take away the two or criteria to go back to like X percent. Now you can probably predict if I try to just say like X, Y, Z percent, that's going to attempt to return any film 
that begins with that specific sequence of characters. And I'm pretty sure that no film has been made that begins with an X followed by a Y followed by a Z. Let's just quickly check, however, by going back to the menu sheet and running our query. Indeed, no results have been returned. To solve this problem, all we need to do is wrap the X, Y, Z in a set of square brackets within the single quotes. So within the string, if you write a set of characters inside some square brackets, that's a character list or a car list. And each one of those characters is treated individually in that sequence. So it's like X percent, like Y percent, like Z percent. So having done that, if we switch back to the menu sheet and we run our query again, we get the same list of films as we saw with the three longer or criteria. Your character lists don't have to consist of characters which belong to a particular sequence, so we could replace X, Y and Z with WTF or OMG or any other combination of characters. You can have as many in that sequence as you like. If I were to go back to my menu sheet and I click the Run Query button, I return currently all the films that begin with either O or M or G. If your characters do appear in a particular sequence, like let's say we wanted anything that begins with W, X, Y or Z, then rather than writing out that specific character sequence, we can say W hyphen Z. So anything that falls between those two characters, alphabetically sorted of course, will be returned. So W, X, Y and Z, if we head back to the main menu sheet and run our query again, any films that begin with either W or X or Y or Z. We can use the same technique to deal with numbers as well. Let's say we wanted to find any film whose title begins with a number. We could either type in the range of numbers from 0 to 9, like so, but that's a little bit silly when we can just say 0 to 9, just to prove that it will work. If I switch back to the menu sheet and run that query, any film that begins with any one of those 10 digits. If I switch back to the Visual Basic Editor, I could have just simply said 029 or 0 9, 0 9, and that will return the exact same set of end results, just in a much simpler, easier way. You can also put multiple sequences of characters within the same character list. So if I wanted to find any film that begins with either a digit between 0 to 9 or a letter between X to Z, then I can include both of those sequences in the same set of square brackets, so 0 to 9, X to Z. If I then have a look back at running the query, back on the menu sheet, I get exactly what I've asked for, any film beginning with either a digit or X, Y or Z. And I can even include, although it looks a little bit strange and a little difficult to read, I can even include other individual characters in that list. So if I wanted to find um, O, M, G, as well, I can insert those in there. I, I can insert them anywhere in the sequence. I've put them in the middle there just because I wanted to put them in alphabetically or at least semi-alphabetically, but they could have been anywhere else in the string as well. So it really doesn't matter. So if I now head back to the menu sheet and run that query again, I can find any film that begins with either a digit or the letter G or the letter M or the letter O or X or Y or Z as well. So again, you can see some quite powerful things you can do by combining character lists with these uh, wildcard operators. As well as having multiple character sequences within the same character list, you can have multiple character lists in the same search string. So let's just change this back to a slightly simpler example. I'm going to go for any film that begins with a single digit or at least one digit. Then after the percentage symbol, I'm going to add another character list that's going to use the same sequence, 0 to 9. So this is basically asking for any film whose first character is a number and whose last character is a number. If I head back to the menu sheet and I run that query, that's exactly what we're going to get. Let's try a slightly different approach. I'm going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor. I'm going to take my percentage symbol away from the middle of those and place the percentage symbol at the end. So this is going to return a list of films who must have at least two digits at the beginning of their name. So heading back to the menu sheet again and running that query, 
There we go. Each film must have a combination of at least two digits at the beginning of its name. If I add one more set of zero to nine uh, character list to that string, so this film now must begin with three numbers followed by anything at all. Heading back to the menu sheet and running that query one more time. There we go. You can also ask for strings of text which are not in the character list. So let's just change our where clause back to a single character list to begin with. And then I want to find any film that does not begin with the letter X. So at the moment, if I just typed in the letter X, that's any film that begins with the letter X. If I say inside the square brackets, an exclamation mark X, then that's any film whose first character is not X. So if I were to head back to the menu sheet and run that query, I get all the films whose title does not begin with X. So you can hopefully see that those are missing there from that little sequence at the end of the list. If I head back to the Visual Basic Editor, I can include multiple characters in that character list as usual. So I could say not X, Y, Z. And then if I head back to my menu sheet and I run that query again, this time I'll find I don't get any films beginning with either X or Y or Z. I could also use a character range. So let's change this now. I want to find any film that does not begin with a number. So I can say not zero to nine. And if I head back to my menu sheet and I run that query again, uh, the first film in my list now begins with letter A. I could also ask for films that um, don't begin with a digit, but which do have a digit somewhere else in their name. So let's have a quick look back at the, uh, the Visual Basic Editor. So I've got um, the first character must not be a number. Then it could be followed by any number of any characters. And then in another set of square brackets, I could say zero to nine. So at the moment, that's asking for any film which ends in a digit zero to nine. But if I add another percentage symbol to the end there, that's going to find any digit anywhere in the film title. So heading back to the menu sheet and running that query once more. So that's any film that doesn't begin with a number, but does have a number somewhere else in its title. I could add one further character sequence to this in a, in a character list. Maybe I want to make sure I don't return a film that ends in a digit. So I could add on to the end of my character string here after the final percentage symbol, another set of square brackets and then not zero to nine. So the final digit must not be a number. OK, so going back to my menu sheet one more time, I'm running that query. I've now got films which contain a number, but do not begin with or end with a number. So we've done quite a lot with wildcard characters at this point. Let's just put some of it together to create a somewhat more complicated string involving all the techniques we've looked at so far. So I'm just going to start by taking this query string back to a fairly basic pattern, one we saw before, the something of the something. So if we have a quick look at the set of results that returns, if I switch back to the menu sheet and run that query, that's any film that begins with the word the, has the sequence of the somewhere inside its name and finishes with anything at all. I'd like to make that a little more specific. Rather than saying of the, I want the word before the to be any two letter sequence. So let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor. Rather than using of, I could replace that with two underscores. So that would be any two character sequence surrounded by spaces. Now, at this point, it could be numbers or punctuation characters as well. I don't think there are any combinations of films in my database which actually return or, or have that specific combination of characters. So I don't think we're going to return any numbers or punctuation characters. But we've got by the, on the, of the, in the. So we've expanded our criteria a little bit or made it a little more flexible. Let's imagine we could have seen numbers or punctuation characters in one of those two letter sequences. Let's make sure that they must be letters. So each of these underscores, I need to be a letter between A to Z. So I can take away the underscore characters and replace those with A to Z. And then another set of square brackets, A to Z. 
so there must be an A to Z in that position and an A to Z in that position. So once again, heading back to the menu sheet, running that query again, shouldn't make any difference to the set of results. Those two pages should be exactly the same. Let's move on and have a look at how we could make sure that um, the first letter of the word after the word the was either A, B or C. So I'm going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor and then rather than just saying the percentage, I'm going to make sure that just before the percentage symbol, we had a letter between A to C. So I could say A, B, C or I could say A to C. It's the same number of characters to type in. It really doesn't matter that much. So if I head back to the menu sheet again and I run that query, now I get just those three films. It's a fairly small list now. Let's change the number of, or let's change the character sequence from A to C to, let's say, R to T instead. I, again, I could have said R, S, T for that. So having done that, I could head back to my menu sheet and I can run that query again. That gives me a few more films, still not that many. Let's say I want A to C as well as R to T in the same character sequence. So let's head back and Again, it doesn't matter whether I do R to T and then A to C or vice versa. I'm going to do A to C followed by R to T. So now if I head back to the menu sheet and run that query again, we're seeing a list of all films that begin with the word the, start with either A, B, C, R, S or T, have of the, on the, in the or some combination of a two letter word followed by the word the, followed by any set of characters to finish off the string. The final thing I'd like to make sure of, though, is to make sure that the character string or the film title does not end in either an E or an S. So let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor and after the percentage symbol at the very end of our string, in another set of square brackets, I'm going to say exclamation mark E S. Oops, I haven't typed in an exclamation mark there. Let's try that again. OK, so having done that, I can head back to my menu sheet and run that query one more time. I've got this very specific list conforming to a very precise pattern of characters now. I'm not sure it's a particularly useful sequence, but it does show you or give you some idea as to how far you can go with this sort of thing. You can combine all the techniques we've looked at so far to create incredibly elaborate patterns to get exactly the text you want. So we've talked about text and numbers quite a lot at this point. We haven't really done much with punctuation characters, apart from a space character, I suppose. So let's have a quick look at some of the things you can do with punctuation. First of all, I want to try to find any film whose title contains a full stop or a period character. So let's change our criteria. I'll replace all of that with a pair of percentage symbols with a full stop somewhere in between. So treating or dealing with single punctuation characters is normally no great effort. It's pretty much the same as dealing with a single letter. So if I head back to my menu sheet and I run that query again, I'll find any film which contains at least one full stop somewhere in its title. In a similar way, I could replace the full stop with an ampersand symbol. And if I run my query again with the menu sheet, I'll find any film that's got an ampersand symbol somewhere within it, uh, a question mark or a Exclamation mark likewise works equally well, so I could head back here and run this query again. And then I will finally add in the exclamation mark character as well, just to prove that when you're dealing with single characters, in most cases, not every case, but in most cases, uh, single punctuation characters aren't much trouble. Punctuation characters can sometimes cause problems with your search strings. Sometimes it's to do with which specific punctuation character it is you're trying to find, and other times it's to do with the sequence in which you type them. Let's just expand our criteria to try to find any film containing any one of the four characters we've just typed in individually. So let's create a char list or a character list by wrapping a set of square brackets around our characters inside our search string. And I'll type in, in the same sequence, a full stop an ampersand, a question mark, and then the exclamation mark. So if I head back to my menu sheet and run that query, that returns a film with any one of those four characters somewhere in its title. So that worked quite nicely. 
Well, let's try to change this a little bit. First of all, I'm going to simplify my character list by going for just a question mark and an exclamation mark. And I'm going to find films that just end with one of those two characters. So having done that, I can head back to my menu sheet and run my query again. And I'll find any film that ends in one of those two different symbols. OK, now let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor and just try to reverse the sequence of characters. Let's go for an exclamation mark followed by a question mark. Now, if you were paying attention to the previous part of the video, you can probably predict what's about to happen here. If I head back to my menu sheet and I run my query, I'm not going to get the list of results I expect. It's not that short list of films ending with either a question mark or with an exclamation mark. This is returning a list of the 1,197 films which do not end in a question mark. Don't forget, when you have a character list, the exclamation mark character acts as the not operator. So anything which follows the exclamation mark is treated as a not. So if you wanted to include an exclamation mark in your character lists, just make sure the exclamation mark is the final character. You will find a similar problem with the other character which has a meaning in a character list. Let's just show you a quick example. I want to find any film which has a hyphen or a dash symbol somewhere in its title. So I'll take away the character list and just look for that one single specific character there, first of all. So if I have a look back at my menu sheet and run my query again, this time any film which contains a dash or a hyphen appears in the results. Now let's try to include the hyphen along with, let's say, a question mark and an exclamation mark. In order to do that, I need to make sure that I wrap this up in some square brackets. So if I say ex uh, hyphen followed by a question mark followed by an exclamation mark, that will be absolutely fine as long as that sequence of characters is in that order. I want to make sure the hyphen is at the beginning and the exclamation mark is at the end. If I head back to my menu sheet and run that query, I return a list of films with any one of those three characters anywhere in their titles. If I had put the hyphen in the wrong position, however, let's say I put it in between those two characters, again, you can probably predict what's about to happen. We use the hyphen character to represent a character range. So this is going to try to find any film between a question mark and an exclamation mark, or a character uh, has a character between those two. So if I head back to the, uh, the menu sheet and I run my query, that fails with an invalid pattern string error. So I can click OK. So in a similar way to the way you need to make sure your exclamation marks sit at the end of your character strings or your character lists, if you want to include hyphens in your character lists, make sure they appear at the beginning. Now, there are some punctuation characters which will cause problems regardless of where you type them into your search string. But to demonstrate these, I'm going to need to add a few new films to the end of our list of movies. Um, so I've got my movies workbook still open at the moment. I'll head back into the film sheet and I'll head down to the bottom of column B. A quick way to do that, by the way, is to hold down the control key and tap the down arrow key, which will stop just above the next blank cell. So I've got a few films to insert into this list. These are completely made up. These aren't real films. I'm sure you'll get that idea very quickly anyway. Um, you'll get what I'm going for here. The first film title I'm going to enter is going to be called 101% Effort. Uh, well, I, I guess that would be some kind of sports drama about an underdog team coming from behind to win the big championship or something. I don't know. Um, the next one's going to be I hate spaces and I hate spaces so much I'm not even going to use spaces in my film title they'll be replaced with underscore characters uh, I guess that would be some kind of dreadful teen romance and one of the character has agoraphobia that they need to overcome to meet up with a love of their life who happens to be a park ranger or something I don't know it'd be dreadful it would go in the same category as Twilight basically uh, the next one, uh, the beauty of brackets, but I'm going to put the word brackets inside a set of square brackets. Uh, I don't even know what that one would be about. Who knows? Uh, there's a reason I'm an IT trainer and not a Hollywood executive. Let's just leave it at that. The final one, I'm going to say, can I quote you? But I'm going to put the word quote inside some double quotes. So can I quote you on that? 
and that would be some kind of, I don't know, political thriller about a tenacious reporter trying to expose a corrupt politician or something. I, I might actually watch that one, actually. Uh, maybe we should try and get it made. Anyway, there's our list of new films. We don't need to save anything here. I just need to go back to the Visual Basic editor and I want to run my query, but I want to make sure I can see my films at the end of the list without the complication of the where clause and the order by clause. So what we could do here is either delete or cut or comment out the bits of text that we don't need at this point. So I'm going to type in an apostrophe at the beginning of the ampersand here to comment out that part. And then I can highlight the other two lines and comment those out quickly. So I'm just going to run my basic select everything from the film sheet. I can head back to my menu sheet, click the run query button and just check that those new films have been added to the end of my list of films. Perfect. So at this point, I'm just going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor and I'm going to bring those commented out lines back because we'll want to bring those in because I need to write some criteria now to try to return those unusual characters belonging to those film titles. OK, so let's start by trying to find the one film which contains a percentage symbol somewhere in its name. If I try to do this in a fairly basic way, so I'm only looking for one single character. I don't need a character list. It's just one single character. But you can probably imagine if I try to type in a search pattern that is just three percentage symbols, one after the other, that's find any film that contains any number of any characters, followed by any number of any characters, followed by any number of any characters. And of course, if I just head back to my menu sheet and run that query, it's going to return every single one of the films. So you can see I have returned 101% effort, but it, uh, it's mixed in with all of the other films in the list as well. So I've got all 1204 films being returned. The basic solution to this is to wrap a set of square brackets around the percentage symbol. So even though you are only looking for one single character, putting the percentage symbol inside the square brackets makes sure that that character is treated as a literal character, not a wildcard. So having done that, if I head back to my menu sheet and run my query, I will see I get my 101% effort. OK, the same basic idea is for the, uh, the underscore wildcard character. If I head back to the Visual Basic Editor, if I try to look for an underscore character, the only difference here, again, without wrapping it up in square brackets, is I must find a film with at least, or sorry, yes, with at least one character in its title. Um, so uh, any number of any characters followed by any one character followed by any number of any characters. So heading back to the menu sheet, that will once again just return every single film. So all 1204 of them. Again, the solution is to wrap up the underscore character in a set of square brackets. And if I do that and I head back to my menu sheet and run my query again, I get the one I hate spaces with at least one underscore in its title. We have a slightly different problem, but a familiar solution if we try to find a film which contains either an open square bracket or a closed square bracket. Let's just try to find any film which contains an open square bracket symbol in its title. If we head back to the menu sheet and we try to run that query, this time rather than just returning everything, it fails with an invalid pattern string error, just as we saw earlier on. So slightly weirdly, although it, I guess it looks slightly weird, when you want to include a square bracket as a literal character in your search string, you need to wrap the square bracket inside a set of square brackets. So it does look a little unusual just looking at it like so. But if we head back to the menu sheet and run that query again, we return the one single film with a square bracket in its title. You will also encounter problems when you want to insert string delimiter characters in your search strings. So I added a film that's got some double quotes inside its title. If I try to replace the square brackets there with a single double quote character, you can probably predict what's going to happen here. If I click away from that line, I'll find that I generate a syntax error. And that's generated because of VBA's syntax rules. And I can't solve that problem simply by wrapping this, the double quote character in some square brackets because syntactically that line is completely wrong. So square brackets aren't necessary and they certainly don't help in this particular situation. 
the solution here is just the same as we saw right at the beginning of the video with the quick recap about how you delimit strings in your SQL queries. If I want to in look for a single double quote character to make the syntax valid, I have to put double double quotes. So having done that, if I head back to my menu sheet and I run that query now, I'll find the one film that's got at least one double quote character somewhere in its title. We see a similar problem when we look for uh, single quote characters or apostrophes. Now the syntax rules of VBA don't indicate this quite so clearly. If I put in a single, single quote, a single apostrophe, syntactically that's fine for VBA. Um, it's the double quotes it has an issue with. But if I try to run this query from the menu sheet, I find that I get a syntax error message, but that's for the SQL side of things. So the, the SQL query causes a syntax error or, or gives us a syntax error when the query is processed and that's passed back up then to the VBA code. So again, the solution is the same. If I want to find a single apostrophe character somewhere in a film's title, then I need to make sure that I double up the single quote characters inside the single quote characters within that string. So finally, if I head back to my menu sheet and I run that query again, I'll find a long list of films. This time there are plenty of films in the database already which have an apostrophe somewhere in their name. Just to tidy up before we move on to the next section, I'm just going to head back to the menu sheet and click the delete all but menu sheet button. Then I'm going to head back to the movies workbook and I'm going to highlight the four rows at the bottom of that uh, that table on the film sheet and then I want to delete those rows so I'm going to right click and choose to delete them. Just heading back up to the top there and then heading back to my Visual Basic Editor. I'm just going to run this query again. I want to make sure I get rid of my where clause so I'm going to comment out those other lines again and then I'm going to run my query with the run query button just to make sure that when I get back to the Visual Basic Editor I'm back to just those 1200 films and then I can bring back those commented out lines before we move on to the next part of the video. For the next section of the video, we're going to get into using functions to calculate new values which we can then evaluate in our WHERE clause. We touched on this idea briefly in the previous video where we wrote some basic expressions that we then checked the result of in our conditions to do things like subtract the value of one column from another. Here we're going to use some functions just to do some more sophisticated calculations. We're not going to get into the full detail of all the functions available. We'll have more detailed videos on that topic later on in the series and we'll show you how to present the results of those functions and expressions as well in your final output. So here we're just going to focus on doing some specific things to write criteria based on text. One thing to bear in mind before we start doing this is that the more expressions you write and the more functions you use in your WHERE clause, the slower your query is going to run. It won't be very noticeable with such a small dataset here of just 1200 rows, but in your real world datasets always bear this in mind before you just start adding lots of functions to your WHERE clause. We're going to start in a fairly simple way, just by trying to find all the films whose title contain exactly three characters. And I know that we've already done this earlier in the video. We've said where title like, and then used three underscore characters to return all the films with exactly three characters in there. Just to demonstrate that this does still work, of course, and to work out how many rows we should be returning when we switch to using a function, let's head back to run this query and we should return a list of seven results, seven films with exactly three characters. To change this to do the same thing or return the set of same set of results using a function, we're going to wrap the len function around the title column. You may well be familiar with this function from either Excel VBA or Excel worksheets or even a different dialect of SQL. It's a fairly common Microsoft function. So we're going to say where len open some round brackets in front of the title column and then close some round brackets immediately after the title column. Then we're not using the like operator. We're not trying to find wildcard matches here. We're just going to check if the result of that function is equal to the number three. So having done that, we've returned seven rows using the basic wildcard pattern. Let's head back to the menu sheet and just check that we get the same set of results using our function as well. 
So why would you choose to do things this way rather than just rely on the basic wildcard pattern that we already know? Well, for something as simple as this, I probably wouldn't bother using the len function at all. But if I had a much longer string that I was testing for, let's say for example, I want to find all the films with at least 50 characters in their name. I do not want to have to type in 50 underscore characters in a sequence. So what I'm going to do is change my condition to ask where the length of the film title is greater than or equal to 50. It might help here as well to demonstrate that you can also sort your query results by the results of these functions. So I'm going to copy my len title function and then place that in the order by clause. So I can sort by in ascending order or descending order of film length. And then if I head back to my menu sheet and run my query again, I'll find a list of all the films with at least 50 characters in their titles. I can also use other operators with the results of these functions as well. So the result of the len function is just a number and I can manipulate and interrogate that number in whichever way I see fit. So let's say I want to find any films whose title falls between three and six characters, for example. So I can say between three and six. I could then head back to my menu sheet and I can run my query again and all my film titles have three, four, five or six characters in their names. I could then reverse that by saying not between if I wanted to. So that would eliminate the 85 rows that do have between three and six characters. I could use the in operator. So let's say I wanted to find all films with either three or six or should we also say nine as well? And close around brackets. So um, the result of that function is just a number. You can use all of the standard operators on that number um, in the same way if it was just a field value. So running that query, if I head back to the menu sheet and run that one again, I've got now films with three or six or nine characters in their titles. Getting even fancier, what if I wanted to find all the films with an even number of characters in their names? In order to do that, I could return the modulus or the modulo of dividing the length of the film title by two and check if that is equal to zero. So what I mean by that is I could take the length of the film title and I can say mod two. So that will divide the film length by two and return the remainder of that division. If it's an even number, then the remainder will be zero. If it's an odd number, the remainder will be one. So I can check if the result of that expression is equal to zero, and that means the film must have an even number of characters in its title. So heading back to the menu sheet and running that query again, I've got films with two or four or six and so on characters in their names, but no odd numbered uh, titles or titles with odd numbers of characters. Another thing that's a little tricky to do with basic wildcard characters is find how many repeats of a particular character or word there are in a string. But we can use the len function to do this. It's still a fairly convoluted solution, admittedly, but we can use the len function by comparing the length of the film title as it normally is with the length of the film title when a certain character or a certain word has been replaced within it. So just to demonstrate the basics of that, what I need to do is subtract the length of the replaced version of the film title from the standard length of the film title. So I've got the length of the film title there. I can then say subtract len and in a set of round brackets, I'm going to now put in the replace function. So replace and then open and close some more round brackets. The replace function has a number of parameters. The first one is which field or which string contains the characters that you want to replace. So I'm going to replace characters in the title column. I can then type in a comma and then I can say which character it is I'm looking for. So let's say I'm looking for the character X followed by another comma and then what do I want to replace the X with in the film title? In this case, I'm going to say an empty string. So single quotes, single quotes. Now, if the difference between those two different values is zero, then it means that character doesn't exist in that film title. 
If the, res if the result of that expression is greater than zero, then it means there's a difference between the lengths when we've taken away the x's. So if it's more than zero, it means the letter x exists in the film title. This is a highly convoluted way of saying title like percent x percent, which would definitely be the way to do it if that's what you were intending. But bear with it just for a moment. Let's have a look at the results if we run this query. There we go. All the films contain at least one letter X somewhere in their title. Now let's say we wanted to find films that contain more than one X. Hopefully there are some. I'm sure there's at least one. There we go. There's at least one. So what we're going to do is check if the result of that expression is greater than one. If it's greater than one, then we must have replaced at least two X's in the film title. So once again, heading back to the menu sheet, I can run that query again, and I'll find the one single film that has at least two X's in its title. We can expand on this idea to find, rather than just one single character, repeated instances of an entire word or character sequence. So rather than the letter X, let's go for the word mad instead. Now the word mad of course has three characters in its name, so in order to establish whether at least one instance of the word mad was replaced in the film title, we should check if the result of subtracting the replaced version from the normal version is greater than or equal to three. And if we head back to the menu sheet and we run that query again, we'll find all the films with at least one instance of the character sequence mad. Now, if we wanted to take that a bit further, let's say we wanted to find at least three instances of the word mad in the film title, then we could simply multiply the number of characters in the word we're looking for by the number of instances we're after. So three by three equals nine, even I can do that maths. And then if I head back to the menu sheet, that's going to return any film with at least three instances of the word mad in its title. Moving on from the len function then, one of the main reasons you might consider using functions in your WHERE clause is to provide access to case-sensitive string comparisons. Let me just give you a brief example of that. I'm going to get rid of the len functions and the criteria there, and we're going to replace that with another function called str-com, or string comparison. Now at a basic level, all you need to do for the string comparison function is provide two different strings of text. So the first string of text is going to be the title field, followed by a comma, and then in some single quotes, I'm going to look for King Kong. Now the string comparison function looks for a match between those two strings. So it's not a contains or begins with, it's an exact match. So it's is title equal to King Kong. And if it is equal to King Kong, the string comparison function returns a value of zero. So to ask if the film title is King Kong, then I have to ask if the result of the string comparison function equals zero. Having done that, if I head back to my menu sheet and I run that query, that returns all the films whose title is equal to King Kong. And at the moment, I hope you can see that it's not case sensitive because all three King Kong films have capital K's at the beginning of each word. To make this a case-sensitive search, there's a third optional parameter of the string comparison function. You can determine whether or not the string comparison is um, what's referred to as binary or text compare. Binary compare is the case-sensitive version, and to make it a binary comparison, you use the value zero for the third parameter. The default is a text comparison, which is the value one. So we're not gonna um, change that. That won't make any difference. It's already using that value. So if we provide the value of zero for the third parameter of string comparison. This time, when we run our query, if I go back to my menu sheet, I won't return any results because there are no case sensitive matches for the strings I've typed in. Let's change this then so we check for King Kong with capital K's, just to reassure ourselves that I, uh, th this is going to work. If I head back to my run query button again, I now return all three King Kong films because their cases now match. So performing case sensitive comparisons when you're asking if one string is equal to another is relatively straightforward. 
but if we want to do things like begins with or ends with or contains a case sensitive string, we've got a little more work to do. I'm just going to change my where clause to look for how we can return the first characters from a string. So I want to try to return the first two letters from any film title, letters, numbers, punctuation characters, whatever. And I want to check if they're equal to the two letters M A. So to do that, we can use the left function. Again, this is something you may already be familiar with from other Microsoft products. It's a fairly common function to use. The left function accepts two parameters. The first parameter is the string you're getting your characters from the left of. So that's going to be the title, of course. And then the second parameter is how many letters you want to get. So I want to get two letters or two characters from the left of the title. And I'd like to check if that's equal to M A. I'm going to type it in in uppercase characters just for the time being. It's not case sensitive, so it really doesn't matter at this point. I'm just going to change my order by clause again so that it orders not by the length of the title, but by the title itself in ascending order. I've just realized I've used double quotes rather than single quotes around my uh, my string. So make sure it's, it's single quotes around the string you're trying to compare the result of that function with. OK, heading back to the visual, uh, the menu sheet and running our query again, we'll return all of the films whose first two letters are M-A in any case whatsoever. What I'd like to do now is find only those films whose first two characters are the letters M-A in uppercase. And there's only one film that matches that criterion. So if I head back to the visual basic editor, I want to basically pass the left title comma to function into the string comparison function. So back into the where clause at the beginning of this expression, I can say str comp, open some round brackets. One of the strings I'm going to compare is the result of the left function. And the second string I'm going to compare is the literal text ma. I want to make sure I'm treating this as a case sensitive comparison. So I'm going to set the third parameter to be a zero and then close the set of round brackets and check if the result of that is equal to zero. So has there been a match between those two strings? Heading back to the menu sheet and running that query again, we'll find we now return just the one single instance where the film title begins with a capital M and a capital A. I could do a similar thing to find films that begin with a capital W and a capital A as well. So just to reassure you that you can combine conditions using functions in much the same way you can combine normal conditions using ands and or operators. So I'm going to copy that entire expression and then at the end of that I'm going to say or and then paste it in and I'll check if the film title begins with a capital W and a capital A. Slightly contrived example, I will have to admit, but if I head back to my menu sheet and run my query again, I get mash and wall E. If I head back to the Visual Basic Editor and change these to look for a capital initial, but a lowercase second letter, MA and WA, then I'll find everything except for, except for mash and wall E when I click my run query button back on the menu sheet. If we want to do a case sensitive ends with, then we can follow a similar pattern to the one we've just used here. I'm just going to get rid of the second criterion, including the or keyword there. And then I'm going to change this query back to looking for films which end with the four letters K-I-N-G. So I'm going to get rid of the string comparison function just for the moment. And I'm going to ask to see films that end with K-I-N-G, but I want a capital K. So K-I-N-G. I'm going to ask if that's equal to rather than a comma. And then I'm going to use four characters rather than two. And I don't want those characters to come from the left hand side of my title column. I want those to come from the right hand side. So there's a right function just in the same way there's a left function that extracts characters from the right of a string. And I'm going to check if those are the, the final four characters of the film title is equal to the four letter sequence K-I-N-G. 
So heading back to my menu sheet, running that query returns all the films that end with K-I-N-G. But I only want the ones that end with a capital K, then lowercase i-n-g. So to get that to work back in the Visual Basic Editor, I need to once again wrap the string comp or str comp function around the right function. So the first string I'm going to compare is the right four characters. The second string I'm going to compare is the four letter character as four character sequence K-I-N-G. And I want to compare that with an a case sensitive comparison, a binary comparison, so I can use the zero there and check if the result of that expression is equal to zero. So have you found a match? So having done that, heading back to the menu sheet, running that query again, returns the three films whose final four characters are K-I-N-G with a capital K. Now what if we wanted to find films whose title consists of only uppercase characters or only lowercase characters? Again, we have a little bit more work to do here. We need a different function. So we're still going to use the string comparison function with a case sensitive comparison. But what we want to compare this time isn't a specific set of characters from the film title. We basically want to compare the film title with the film title, but with a modification made to one of these. So let me just set up the, uh, the basic example first. This won't make much sense. Clearly at this point we're saying, is the, uh, the film's title equal to the film's title with a case sensitive comparison? So that would return all of the films. So what I would like to do is modify one of these two film titles to check that it's all in either uppercase or lowercase characters. So there's a function, again, you may well have encountered this, a function called ucase, which converts strings into all uppercase characters. So I'll wrap the ucase function around the film title at the beginning. And that's going to compare that with the film title that hasn't had its case converted. So if both of these are the same, then it means that the film title must consist of all uppercase characters. So if I head back to the menu sheet and run that query, I return all the films that consist of, well, either all uppercase characters or a combination of uppercase characters and numbers or all numbers. Converting numbers into uppercase doesn't change them, of course, so their, their titles are still the same. To do the reverse and do this in lowercase is pretty straightforward as well. You might already imagine if there's a U case function, it stands to reason there's probably also an L case function for lowercase strings. And if I do that and run the query again, I'll find all the films that consist of either entirely lowercase letters or a combination of le lowercase letters and numbers or just numbers. If I wanted to exclude the film titles that have numbers in them, then, well, there's nothing to stop you including standard wildcard patterns in your search strings, in your where clauses, alongside your function comparisons. Let's head back to the VB editor. I'll change this back to searching for uppercase film titles. And then at the end of the where clause, I can say and, and then we can say title, like, and then in some single quotes and some uh, percentage symbols. And I forgot I meant to say not like, we're trying to find films that do not include a number. So title not like, and then inside those percentage symbols, we can put in a character list and say zero to nine. Okay, so having done that, we can head back to the menu sheet and run that once more. And we get all the films that consist of only uh, letters or at least films with no numbers in them with all uppercase letters. Now what if we want to do a case sensitive contains? To do that we need a different function, so we're going to move away from using the string comparison function. We're going to replace that with a new function called instr or instring. It's another one of the text functions which allows you to specify the comparison type, whether it's binary or text, case sensitive or not. The instring function has a variety of parameters. The first one is the starting position that you want to begin looking for your string. So I want to start at character number one inside the film title. So the second parameter is which bit of text are you looking in? Then another comma, then it's the string that you're looking for. So I'm going to go with the letter X. And I'm going to go with a capital letter X there. And then just for the moment, I'm going to 
close the round brackets and then check what the result of that function is. I want to make sure that the result of that function is greater than zero. The instring function attempts to return the position of the string you're looking for within the string you're looking in. So if there is a letter X somewhere in the film title, it will tell me which character position that is in. So as long as the value returned is greater than zero, it must mean that that letter has been found within that title. So just to demonstrate that, if we head back to the menu sheet and run the query, I'll find any film that's got a letter X anywhere in its name. Now I want to make sure that I only find capital letter X's. And to do that, we can do the same basic thing we did with the string comparison function. At the end of the letter X, we can type in another comma and then type in a value of zero to represent a binary comparison or a case sensitive comparison. So if I do that, if I run the query again from the menu sheet, I'll find only those films with a capital letter X in their names. If I want to find films which don't contain a capital letter X somewhere in their name, then I can just check if the result of the instring function equals zero. So heading back to my where clause, I can change the greater than to an equals, head back to the menu sheet, run the query again, and that's all the films that don't contain a capital letter X, which should be um, 1200 minus the number with a capital letter X. Just like with the string comparison function, you can pass in um, multiple characters. So you can search for words or character sequences here. So rather than just the letter X, I could search for films that contain the word king with an uppercase K anywhere in their title and make sure that that returns a value of greater than zero. So I can head back to the menu sheet again and run that query. And that's any film that contains the letter, sorry, the word King or the four letter sequence K-I-N-G with a capital letter K. So we've seen how to get characters from the left of a string and from the right of a string. Let's just finish the video by looking at how to refer to characters at a specific position somewhere in the middle of the string. Again, this is likely to be using a function you've encountered previously using VBA or Excel. There's a function called mid. So what I'd like to do is change my criteria first of all. Let's get rid of the instring function entirely and replace that with the mid function. The mid function takes three parameters. So the first one is the string you're trying to extract your text from. So I'm going to refer to the title column again, follow that with a comma. And then I want to say which position I want to begin extracting characters from. So let's say I want to get from the second character in the film title. I want to get the next one character. So that basically just extracts the second character from that string. What I could then do is check if that character is equal to something. Let's say I want to find out if it's equal to the number two, for example. So I could check using the number two, wrapping the number two up in some single quotes. And if I were to head back to my menu sheet and run that query, that would return all the films whose second character equals the number two. I could, of course, combine that with some wildcard patterns as well. So I could say whether the second character is like, and then rather than just saying the number two, I could wrap that up in some square brackets, sorry, in some, um, yes, yeah, speck pardon, some square brackets, and then check if that's equal to zero to nine. Okay. So there we go. If I head back to the menu sheet and I run that query again, that's any film whose second character is a number between zero to nine. I can also search for entire words. So let's just change the mid function this time. I want to start at the 14th character this time, and I want to return the next three characters from there. And I'd like to ask if that's equal to, rather than like, I'm going to ask if it's equal to the word and or the three letter sequence A, N and D. So you can probably predict it's quite important to match the number of characters you type in here with the length of the string you're typing in. Otherwise, you're definitely not going to return a match. But having done that, if I head back to the menu sheet and run that query, that returns any film who's um, that contains the word and starting at the 14th position in that string. So there we go. There's a fairly comprehensive look at how you write criteria involving text in SQL for Excel.
In the next video, we're going to look at some of the ideas we've encountered here in terms of calculating new values, but look at how you can display those calculated values in your query outputs. So we'll look at generating basic calculated columns. Hope you found this one useful. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.